What's going on, guys? Girls, Rob here, and we are waiting Ken Castro. We've sent him. We've sent him a, a invitation. Ken can only say yes or no, and I think he'll come. I think he will. He said eight thirty, maybe, and it's like eleven or twelve after eight now. We'll see if he pops in here. So it'd be cool if he can show up. Uh, we can find out some of his writing endeavors. He, he he's looking to re retire. You know, where is that bastard? <laughs> What's up, Sean? We're trying to get him on here. We're trying to. We're still trying to. We ain't giving up. We ain't giving up yet. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. Yeah, two or three people in here right now. Uh, yeah, we'll. I sent him an invite, so all he has to do is where's Ken? We're gonna try to get him in here. We're trying to get him in here, guys. We are trying to get Ken in here. Uh, he uh, he's texting me and emailed me stuff, texting me and emailed me. Uh, well, I've, we gotta get we gotta get Keith in here too. He's invisible. No, he's not invisible. He he he'll pop up in there in a minute. We gotta get Keith in here too. Keith White. We gotta get to the bottom of that bullshit. Him and, and, and the uh, he's probably naked in bed eating Lay's chips. <laughs> we gotta get we gotta get to the bottom of Keith and the secretary. And the one with the stitches above her eyes. I'm telling you, he goes around with a rough punch. <laughs> we got to find out what they got going on. Uh, we, we are waiting, uh, Ken Castro, with a, yeah, with a Pepsi, no, no Coke. <laughs> uh, I don't know. He, he talks like he do some drinking. So I don't know if he I don't know if he gets involved in that or not. <laughs> it's pretty good though if he do. See, I want to see a couple of the fighting ones want to come on here. I want to get them on here live. Doctor Pupple says not Aston. <laughs> I want to see a couple of the fighting chicks, especially the. Uh, Secretary, he talks like she is. She's ready. She's ready to brawl. Somebody send him ninety minutes of funky house so he can deal with Sean. <laughs> I, uh, I sent him. A, I sent him my uh, inv invitation, so he should be coming in here. We're gonna try to get him in here. We got an invitation for him, so once he pops in here, I will see him right off. Then the screen will get cut in half. I don't know why I'm going to be on this half or whether I'm going to be on this half. I think I'm generally most time on this side. So if I was cool, that would be cool. I can sit right here where I'm at. But uh, it generally, when we do it, then uh, the, the damn my, – uh, Camera gets, I'll have to fix the camera. I know that. I'll have to fix the camera. So uh, we're waiting, Ken. Ken said um, 8.30, 8.15, be fashionably, fashionably late, 8.30, I guess. So let's see if we can get him in here before 8.30. I hope so. Yeah, he was saying he bought some bike parts today, bike wheels or uh, sport wheels, something paid a grand for them. $1,000. Now, he, I realize he rides professionally. He, he rides a bicycle, too. It's a bicycle. Yeah, well, professionally. Yeah, he's... What's up, Alex? What's going on? Oh. Yeah, he, he he's serious into it. He's serious into it. And uh, so we'll see what... We'll see what's happening with him. 
when we talk to him. We won't find out yet. Do like this video. That would be nice. Um, I definitely want to find out when he's, he's putting hydraulics on his bike. <laughs> I don't know what he's got going on. And plus, I would. I know he says he uh, he's putting a lot of money into it, and he's got what is a thirty five hundred dollar bike. I think he did something like it anyway. Yeah, but that's just yeah. What's wrong? Put something else on, Mom. Where's the remote for your mother? Oh, it's right there. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's called the resident. Oh, yeah. He's turning into Iron Man. Bought some chicken parts at the store today. Beaks and buttholes. <laughs> uh, that's Don Heston's. That's Don. That's Don Heston's handle on his radio station. Alex says, go do Don Beeks and Butthole Heston. <laughs> Duke, they, they ain't on TV tonight, are they? No. I don't think they are. <sighs> Oh boy, Selection Sunday, I guess, coming up this week, right? Did you stick your finger up the butt and smell it? Says, says Sean to Don. Where's my man? Where's my man, Ken? Now, let's get him in here. I want to see Ken. Ken is five foot nothing, 140 pounds. Five foot nothing. Nah, hey, he's not a real big guy, though. And uh, he's taken part in the transplant games in the past. Oh, man, he's been so many countries. He's covered a lot, a lot of events over the years. Some Olympics, uh, some different women's events. He's done a lot of stuff. And then, like I said, the transplant games, he's won, he's won gold, I think. Uh, he's come down to Richmond, Virginia. I don't think he won then. He may have. Um, but I think when he went to Canada, he won a gold and he's been overseas played, you know, participated. In um, I, I want to say it was track type stuff. 11 days is selection Sunday. Oh, is it really? Okay. All right. So it's not this, it's not this, uh, Sunday coming up. What's, what's up, Mike sports time machine. What's going on? And, um, yeah, I mean, I invited Ken up. It's, uh, what was it, 820 now? Let's see if we can get him in here. Ken, where you at, bud? Hook, hook that, hook your, uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm hoping we get him in here in a minute. We should. So, uh, so where did you end up seeing one one of these things at, Sean? Where did you end up seeing that thing at? That's a fun, that's the funniest jumping thing I have ever seen in my life. You get him to flip, you get him to flip, and then you try to get him to land on his feet. You dismount off of that thing into the eye and make him try to land. And my mom and Dar have both seen him land. Mm -hmm. It don't happen much, but once in a while on a commercial, that's funny. I've gotten him, I've gotten the perfect landing on a hundred, but it no, it don't happen a lot. <laughs> this time he lands on his damn head. <laughs> but 
But if, if you get the timing right on it, you 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 can do it. It can happen. But uh, it's fun. It's funny to do. It really is. It's funny. Oh man. <laughs> Heard. Ken is putting on his makeup. Yeah, I think Ken's putting his makeup on. Well, that's all right. Let Ken put his makeup on. <laughs> putting on putting on his Boston Red Sox jersey. His now his Greg Lamont jersey. Or or uh, what's his name? The other guy that won all in them. What's his name? Not Lamont, but the other one. Armstrong. Lance Armstrong. Maybe he's putting a Lance Armstrong jersey on. <laughs> Lance. Lance had some rough luck. Let's see what's happening in the world. Breeze is not going to play quarterback for the Saints next season, says Mr. Rappaport. <laughs> Real life couple to start an online, start an on screen storyline. Rob needs a mohawk. <laughs> Where can I get me one at? You got one, Alex? If you got if you got one, Alex, I'll bring you I'll I'll bring you online with me. Ken Castro. We gotta say his name three times, kinda like Beetlejuice. Ken Castro. Ken Castro. Ken Castro. Mm. He has a shirt. I love you, Mr. Daddy Uncle Armstrong. <laughs> Mr. Daddy Uncle Armstrong. Uh, Archie Bradley has the look of a legendary closer, but first he has to earn the title. Yep. From the Phillies. Um, James Harden gets his seventh triple double. And Kyrie Irving, I don't think, is impressed. And Tiger Woods. I guess we're going to be hearing uh, more about his situation, about his legs and stuff soon. But... Uh, it's not looking too promising. Phillies 0 and 2. Now it's in another uh, what 0 and 3. Yeah, they're 0 and 3. They're 0 and 3 since the start of spring training. Not good. No, 0 and 2. Y'all stay in the day. That's no, they played Sunday too. I don't think he won yet. Odubel Herrera, they bringing him back. Uh, yeah, they only played six innings today, so uh, for whatever reason. Yankees are scouting Cespedes. Okay. Thank you, scouting. You want to, you want to suck with us? Well, Alex. You mean the Yankees are scouting them? Oh, all right. Um, where is... Ken Castro. Where in the world is Ken Castro? We do, we do a TV show. Where in the world is Ken Castro? So. What's up, hockey unreal? Hey guys, what's going on? We're going. We're certainly trying to get Ken Castro on in here. Uh, he's got the invite sent to him. He said eight thirty. Uh, it's eight twenty-six. 
Ken will be fast and bloody late. He is putting the makeup on right now as we speak. Clippers, Celtics, 23 each. Four and a half minutes left in the first quarter. First one to 150 wins that game, I guess, tonight. So uh, we'll see what they're. You know what? Uh, huh. I'm very tired. I'm a little bit. You are. I think so. Oh, okay. I'm very tired tonight. I don't want to hear that. That's for sure. Well, I don't look too either, but I just feel very tired. Yeah. I can't keep my eyes open. You want me to show you how to get to? Not right now. Right. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll do it before you. It's official. A new Beavis and Butthead movie is coming. <laughs> Red Sox 9, Rays 3 today. Rays had six hits. We don't know how many uh, Red Sox had. They didn't say how many they had. All right, Ken. All right, fastball late's one thing. Get your rear out of the bed. Sleepy head. Do 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 do. Alex, Sean, Hockey Unreal, Demos, I need to go read some Dr. Seuss book. Ain't that some shit about Dr. Seuss? They go, you know what? What? The, and then, I, I, okay, it was about a Chinese person eating with chopsticks. Duh, don't they eat with chopsticks, damn it? <laughs> Next thing you're going to do, we had to take that off because they were walking with their feet. No shit, Sherlock. Come on. People are stupid, man. So that's why we had to take, that's why they had to remove uh, the situation with Dr. Seuss, I think, was Chinese people eating with chopsticks. Mr. Potato Head. Oh, yeah, Mr. Potato Head's no longer Mr. Potato Head. It oh, is dual sex. Dual sex or some shit. Either way, maybe that's what they call him now. But Potato Head, either way. <laughs> All right, we'll see you in the morning. Yeah. Either way, potato head. Ain't that some stuff? Yeah, I, he, he won't looking for it that hard. He was just mostly pissed. Dad was looking for his watch early. He was mad. Went through her pocketbook and shit. We should, we should have had him over here doing that. That would have been pretty good. Ken Castro, where you at, my friend? Where you at, Ken? Let's see if I can find him. All right. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Potato Head. No, it's just Potato Head now. Oh, she's telling him where his watch is. He'll be the guy that's ass up and come in here and got it. <laughs> he don't need them damn watch on what he used to be. And it's one of them kind. It's one of them kind that grabs a hold to your wrist. It's got that little stretchy mark, one of them little marks on it. Cut the piss out of your hand if you don't watch that. He don't care. He wears it everywhere. To bed. Most time when he takes a shower, he takes it off. But other than that, he, to me, he wears it wherever else he goes. I'm just like, take the damn thing off when you go to bed. Man, if you flip your hand up under the pillow or something the wrong way, it's going to hurt like hell. So, I had one of that. Yeah, they hurt. They hurt. Come on, Ken. Come on, Ken. Come on. 
I don't want to get Ken on here so bad, man. And you know, I've already got it. We got him listed on here. Come on, Ken. Let's see. Let me send it to him again. We can get Ken in here. Let's see what else. Rob, when we first met, it was in June. Yeah, it was in June. Yeah. Yeah. It was the same day I met. Um, same day I met Demos. It was just three hour, two and a half hours earlier. Something like that. About two hours earlier, I guess. Because we met him close to his house. Yeah. Yeah. He he came down and met us at the store. And uh, I downloaded I downloaded that while we were still down there. Yeah. So it worked out pretty good. Worked out all white. All white. It worked out all white. All right, Ken, where you at, bro? Come on. He's not answering messages. Uh, come on, Kenny. <laughs> so, oh, me. I'm hoping he comes on. Come on, Ken. <laughs> What's up, MP Fox? Hey, good evening. Quick stop to say before homework time. Oh, uh, what's going on, MP Fox? We're hoping to get Ken Castro on here. I hope to. Uh, all right. We got to get Ken in here now. You got to hit your invite. You got to go to your, you got to go to your, uh, You got to go to your invite in your email, Ken, and it'll put you on here. So you got to go to your Gmail. At least, is it Gmail? Yeah. Yeah. Say hi. I'm saying hello. Hi. Ken says hey. Ken goes to his email now. He can. And then I can I can invite him as soon as he pops on here. We can do that. We're not going to hold Ken very long, like maybe 30 minutes, something like that. We want to get him on here for a little while. We've got some questions to ask him. He's got a lot going on. Uh, 
He's uh, in his final year before he retires. He's thinking about retiring from writing, sports writing. Um, the one thing he wants to do, cover, it's ass mail. <laughs> so Ken has to go to yeah, Ken has to go to his email, and I send him something, and then he can pop. Once he hits, it's it's like an invitation through the email, then he can, he can hit it and it, it automatically sends him over here to StreamYard. So it won't be no problem. He don't have to download nothing. I don't download a thing. I just, I'm just here to visit. So I don't, I don't pay per month. So I've got 20 hours that I can use Ken's old ass walk to his mailbox. <laughs> uh, Get your email, Ken. <laughs> Let's see if he got it. I hope so. He got sent. I see where it got sent. So all, he, all he's got to do is hop over to his email. Oh, here he goes. Here he comes. <laughs> there he comes. Now we just got to get him. We saw an arm. There was an arm. There was an arm. There he is. There's a head. There's an arm and a head. As a hat. And there he is. Ken, what's going on, my friend? Hey, guys. All right. Yeah. All right. So, we got Ken at the head. What's going on? Now, what the hell? A thousand bucks for wheels today? Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> what kind? What kind? I'm sorry. What what type? I mean, what, what what's the brand name and uh, uh like uh, what kind? What kind of wheel was it? Now, I, I'm hoping that you got two wheels for this. I did. Uh, so they're called HED wheels. They're a carbon fiber wheel which is uh, very expensive, obviously. So I decided to pull the trigger and get them. Now, on the inside, does it have spikes or is it like a solid? Like, is it made for like, I see some of them are solid, like maybe time trial type things. Or is it exactly. solid? Is that what you've got? Or, is it, or, or do you um, have spokes? No, it has, it has, no, it has spokes, but the, uh, the fairing that comes down the carbon, it goes down deeper. It's a deeper wheel. Okay. Um, is it is just regular air driven? I mean, just I mean, you still pump it up with air, but like, do you like you have more air in those tires, less air, or, or I mean, uh, less less air, less air. That's it. Because that way, when you start running and getting five, eight, ten, twelve miles, they it's kind of like a NASCAR. NASCAR starts tire. They start their they start some of their back tires at fourteen and fifteen pounds, and people are like, "Why are they flat?" Well, guess what? After they've run one hundred fifty miles an hour for ten laps, they got 35, 40, 45 pounds of tire. And is that the same? Are we under the same principle with? With bikes, yeah. yeah, it's the same concept pretty much. Um, yeah, so there's less tire than the average person driving around getting getting a coffee down, you know, in his town, doing the mile and up mile back kind of thing. But yeah, it's a uh, it's a whole different story. Furthest you've ever rode competitively in one sitting? Like, are we uh, hundred miles, hundred fifty miles? 200 miles, what we're talking? Uh, yeah, about 100. About 100. 100. Yeah. Yep. Now, have you ever have you ever won a 100-mile race? No. So here's the thing. Cyclists, is, okay. uh, cyclists have different categories. There's sprinters, like on the tracks, like track sprinters. Like, like, oh, yeah. Um, like that. And that's my body. I'm really not a good endurance athlete. My, my forte is sprinting, going on the velodrome, and that kind of stuff. I'm a short. I'm a short distance guy. I can go fast for a long period of time, 
Um, but a guy I trained with, you know, he rode 160 miles the other day, no problem. I, I can't do that. My body, oh. my body type. And that's and that's oh, the cool. way you're born. You can train for endurance, but it's very hard. I, I mean, I trained for nine years. Um, you know, as, as you know, I already I spent the whole summer in Italy racing when I was like 27, 28. And um, I couldn't climb because I was too heavy for myself. I mean, I'm 170. And most of the guys yeah. that are, most of the pros are 122, 123. I'm yeah. 170. So there's power. And, and, my, and, my, you're my, only, my, and you're only like, what, 5'5", five, five maybe? I'm 5'5", five, five, yeah. 5'5", five, five, and you're still bigger than, what, 75% of them, 85% of them? No, they're finding now that a lot of the tall guys are doing really well in the pro in the pros. But again, they're like six. They're like six one, maybe a little smaller than you. And uh, you know, they're like they're like, they're like one hundred twenty one pounds. It's nuts. Oh, so they're all bony. They're all really, really just skinny and all. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, well, you know, and a couple of couple of them over in England when we watched Tour de France, somebody like a. a uh, who was a, who was a sprinter? Didn't make it this year. He didn't make it on the team. Uh, <laughs> oh, Mark Cavendish. Cavendish, right? Cavendish yep. is a small guy. He is he, not- but but you can look and see his arms. I mean, his legs are muscular. They exactly. Are, I mean, that's probably the most muscular part of his body is his, is his legs. Exactly. I mean, you, if you watch if you watch the Tour de France, you pay close attention to it. Um, so the winner comes in in the mountains, I don't know, four or five hours, whatever. You know, the guys that are like me and the sprinters like Cavendish, they're coming in at six plus. That's how far right, behind right. Because they give because that, they they give that, what, 15%. They give that 10 or 15% at the end of the race. Yeah. Right. So they're not even, they're not even racing. All, no. they're doing, all they're doing is trying to hang on time-wise to where they're not disqualified. Exactly. Yeah, you yeah. got it, Rob. That's it. That's it. You got it. Yeah, so I, I've been watching it for better part of 25, 30 years. Le Mans, uh, uh hell, you can say what you want to about these guys. Armstrong, all, and the thing is, when Armstrong was in it, I, I look at it this way. Armstrong and Barry Bonds, pretty much the same situation. <laughs> they, yeah. both, they both did shit they weren't supposed to do, but everybody around them was doing the same stuff. Exactly. Yeah. So that doesn't, to me, it doesn't take away from what the hell Armstrong could do. Because one thing, about, number one, he always had a team around him that supported him. And then number right. two, then number two, nobody else ever pushed him that hard very often. He, he was just, he was yep. just, yeah, he was just, I tell you, anybody can so, make fun of him and talk about him and shit, but I'll tell you one damn thing. If he's not one of the ten be- best athletes ever that I've watched, something's wrong. Because, dude, I'm telling you, when he went seven, eight, seven, seven yeah, hell yeah, man, oh man, I tell you that that so, is that's something in itself. Because it's what twenty one days, twenty two days, twenty one days, and yeah. there's also the uh, there's also the tour of Italy, which is twenty one, and then later in the summer there's a tour of Spain in the summer. You know. A good pro, a good pro can race 200, and, 200 plus times a year. That think about that. Yeah, like they tour, tour, Cal, tour California has got to yeah. be tough. That's got to be tough. Yeah, it's I'll a really hard you. race in that sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah that's got to be tough. And I'm telling you, if they ever did one down in South America, down like Peru, I don't know if they do it or not. Good lord, the mountains and stuff that they do down there and stuff, it would be nuts. Rob is a biking genius. No, Rob has not been on a bicycle in 15 years. Ken is like Usain Bolt. No, Ask no, Sean. Sean, you can, Sean, you can't, Sean, Sean can't borrow the thousand dollars because I just spent it. Yeah. <laughs> he just spent it. Uh, him and Barry Wines, the top two athletes of all time, cheating. Well, I'll, look, the fact is, Everybody around them was doing the same stuff. McGuire, Sosa, mm-hmm. Pujols. Hell, Pujols was doing it then. He's still doing it. So, right. shit. Yeah. Now, they finally – I finally heard a report 
out of L.A. yesterday saying this is going to be Pujols' last year. He is – man, he's had the angel strapped for the last four years. they got to be glad if he walks after this year. Yeah, I agree. Um, I agree. Uh, yeah, because, look, as soon as they freed him up, soon the Cardinals freed him up, they did everything they could get. You know, they wanted to get power hitter, power hitter, power hitter. They went three years, just nothing. Finally got Goldschmidt. Now they got Arenado. Cardinals going the right way. Cardinals are doing it the right way. Right, exactly. Um, so, um, so I wanted to mention one thing about uh, pro cycling. Uh, if you got a team of 14 guys, um, yep. and so everyone works for the one star, all the other guys – are basically told never to win in their whole career. Yeah. They can't held, win. They're held back. Because if, they so are I, held that's, back. To me, that's one of the hardest things in sports to do is not win. I mean, that's yeah. what you're That's what you're wired to do is to win, right? Yeah. And that's yeah. what you're wired to do. And then they tell you not to win. A lot, so. and a lot, a lot of these are high-paid athletes. A lot of these yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what, what, what would you say um, – let, let's say the winning team of, on, of the uh, Tour de France. What would you say Team Rider 5, 6, 7 makes doing that? Well, um, well once, uh, once they, they split up the prize money, actually. That's what they oh, do. So they split it evenly. Yeah, they split it evenly. And the winner gets whatever prize that is, which is, you know, he gets a car. Plus, he gets sponsorship that's way more money than the actual prize. Yeah. 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 Kind of, kind of like golf. Kind of like golf. Golf, if, if you go out and win, you get get the, the car, you'll get the, uh, the use of it for a year or uh, then, you know, the big prize or whatever. And then, depending on who your like sponsors are, uh, for instance, this week I think this week is uh, Arnie's tournament, and I th I think that um, Titleist has a little something extra for any of the Titleist guys that you have use a Titleist ball down there, and um, that should be interesting. That should be very very interesting because. Um, you know, all I've been hearing all week long, it, it's, it's sad. Um, um, golf's not going to be the same without Tiger Woods. Mm. Look, but look for the last seven years, folks. Tiger Woods, in the last seven years, has not played 50 tournaments. Seven years, 50 tournaments. That's nothing. That's seven a year. He's not done that even. It's just, to me, um, this young crop of talent is getting uh, – they're getting a big shaft on them when we're talking about – look, Tiger Woods in his heyday was the best to watch. No doubt about that. But look at, look at this crop, Markawa. Uh, there's a lot of good kids out there now that know how to play the game of golf. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. Yeah, do you, now do you watch golf? Uh, I used to. I, used to, I actually covered the uh, Deutsche Bank back in the day. Oh, okay. Uh, that was in Boston. Yeah, yeah, it's in Boston. It was Tiger, and I think Phil was there. I have the, I have the credentials somewhere. I think I'm going to say it was 2005 or 2004. Yeah, I spent a couple of days there. It was pretty good. That was a good yeah, gig. Yeah, um, I used to go down to the uh, – um, let's see. Uh, the uh, rider used to send me, they, um, uh, I worked for a company and they would just give me tickets and I would go down to the greater Greensboro open. And uh, that was at Forest Oaks at the time. They've switched it now. It's right there in, in Greensboro outside. Uh, well, this was actually a little ways outside of Greensboro. And, okay. um, Man, I would. I mean, I'd get court blanche when I went down there. I mean, it'd be like, okay, you can walk by the gates, you can go wherever the hell you want to. 
And, man, I'll tell you what, real quick, that's an athlete that you can find out real quick whether you can even talk to them or they're the biggest prick in the world, a golfer. Yeah, you, they, you know, they you know, are, you've done they're the most yeah, you know. bitches ever. They are some fickle assholes. Some of them are. Yeah. 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 I, now I've, I've interviewed NASCAR guys, and mm. uh, I got to admit, some of the older guys, they were some fickle son of a bitches. Dale Earnhardt. You put a camera in front of him, man. He he did not like it. Ernie Irvin didn't like it. Uh, Neil Bonnet, he wasn't crazy about it. Uh, Daryl Waltrip, some of these guys now, they're like magnets. If they if you throw a camera on, it's like they're going to try to <laughs> come around, even if you're not talking to them. They love mm -hmm. it. Uh, Jamie McMurray, I, so many of them. It's, it's a, a ton of them. But it's crazy that uh, that back in the day, that's the way they were. You know, they kind of stayed to themselves, sure. and sure. yeah, and their sponsors would pay them well. But it was more or less the only time you're gonna see me is when you know when the television's on. Other than that, you're not gonna see me on the news report or something like that because. Nothing good can come of it because you're generally going to see something you probably weren't supposed to see, whether it was right. somebody was another girl, whatever, whatever. But it was so much, so much wild yeah. stuff going on. Yeah, yeah. So, what kind of board games you got going on now? Uh, I got hockey bones. They got a great team set. I just bought uh, six teams. Uh, that's been taking up most of my time. Playing a little pine tar. Uh, let's see, Apple Master. Um, yeah, that's about it. Those three right now. Roger Williams yeah. University. Did you go there? I did, sir. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just saw the hat. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I was, I was a track coach there for a couple of years also. Oh, okay. All right. And, um, can't, can't leave this out. Trans, transplant games. Um, yep. You, uh, how, how many times have you participated in the transplant games? Did you say 11? Uh, I did one world games in, uh, Gothenburg, Sweden in 2011. That was right after my transplant. Uh, okay. U.S. game, U.S. games. I did, uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan, uh, Virginia, uh, Richmond, and, Cleveland. Cleveland, Cleveland, Richmond and Cleveland in 2016. Uh, the Canadian games, I did Calgary, uh, New Brunswick, and Calgary, New Brunswick. I think that's it. I th yeah, I've okay. done seven or eight. Yeah. And, and Calgary, you won. Cal yeah, Calgary in 2012 was my best transplant games. I think I won I won the long jump. I won the uh, ball throw, which is just like a job. It's a softball throw. I won that in my age group. Uh, I won – what was it like, a shot put? Is it like a shot put or actually you just throw it? Well, it's supposed to be the job one, but because there's so many people, they didn't want to hurt anybody. There's too much liability. So they had in, in Canada, uh, the games are, uh, the transplant games are throwing a softball. So. Oh, okay. And, and is where it lands or after it stops? Uh, where it lands. Where it lands. Okay. Do you know how far you threw one? Uh, it was 143 meters, whatever that is. It's all in meters. Uh, meters 185 feet. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I ain't bad. So 140, 143 meters to that. Um, I, just yeah, that was a I think that's what it is. Uh, yeah. Let's see. I'll find it right now. 143 meters in feet. 143 meters is 469 feet, 1.921 inches. All right, how many yards is that then? Oh, 143 meters is 469 feet. Four I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, um, 143 feet. I was fixing to call you Orlando Cepeda. 
Yeah, man. No, it was, uh, <laughs> uh, 143 feet. That won it. I uh, threw 145 at the U.S. games in Grand Rapids. Um, I think that's my best. Oh, um, one, this was all 143 yeah. feet. 143. Okay. Yeah. All right. That ain't, uh, and that, okay. And that, that's more. And that me. was, uh, and that was uh, 50, 50 and up age category. Oh, I got you. Yep. I got you. And um, that's cool. Now, are you planning on doing any more of those? Yeah, of course. That's what I've been training for on the bike. Um, so, as you, as you know, I raced for nine years, uh, spent some time in Europe, and I wasn't good enough to make it at, at a you know at a high level. Um, okay. So, I, I, so when I when, after nine years of racing all around the country, I've raced on the bike. Back in the day when I was younger, I raced in uh, Bermuda, I raced in Canada, I raced everywhere and across the United States. I just wasn't good enough. I mean, you know, it comes to that realization that you're not good enough. So okay. I wasn't good enough. So a buddy of mine said, uh, you know, you're a good sprinter on the bike. Why don't you do 100 meters, 200 meters? And that that was it. I spent 25 years as a master sprinter. Um, oh, okay. For a long time. That was, track and field was my life for the long, longest time. At one point, uh, indoors for the 55 meter of my age group, which was, I think, 35 or 40 at the time, I was ranked like seventh in the country back then. So what happened was I kind of got sick of track and field over the last three years. And I said, you know what? I'm going back to what I love most, and what I love most is cycling. It's always I've, it's always been that. So I went back to cycling, and uh, I've been training for three years now. Um, but they just went virtual with that. There's not going to be a meet a competition this year, so I don't know where where that puts me right now. Oh, okay, I got you. That kind of stinks on that one there. Um, you keeping up with? Are um, you keeping the only other? With uh, ahead, hockey, you keeping up with hockey? Yeah, yeah, of course. I've been watching two or three games a night. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah. It, is Toronto for real, or is Toronto just kicking, or are they just kicking the Canadians' asses, and they don't have nothing for the U.S.? What do you think? You know what? I've seen I've seen Toronto play probably eighty percent of their games already. And yeah. Uh, yeah, they're legit. They're legit. They're good. I think they're good too. I, a lot. A lot of people tell me they're the best team in hockey. I'm. I i do not know if I'm ready to go that far. You think they are? Okay. Uh, right now, I think they are. You do. I, right now. Uh, don't forget, we got a long way to go between now and the playoffs. A lot of things happen. You know that. Yeah, but the only thing about it is you're playing the same team, so that's the problem. Right. Right, you know, right, right, right. Yeah. You know, they get to play the Habs, they get to play the Oilers, they get to play the the Jets. They're not playing the Bruins. They're not playing the Philadelphia teams. They're not playing these gritty teams. That no, I really, agree. Yeah, and that's the thing. I, the I East, agree. I think the East. I think the East has got a little something going for them there because Philadelphia gets to play uh, like like Buffalo. And, and Buffalo's not a great team, but Buffalo's a gritty team. Uh, Boston, Pittsburgh, those those teams, man, I'm telling you. Uh, oh, what's up, D. Scott Howard? What's up, my friend? <laughs> There's hey, a pair. Of Hello, boys. Yeah, how you know? um, And also, in the, in the Northern Division, which is the Canadian Division, also has two of the god-awful teams in hockey right now, which is Vancouver Ottawa. and Ottawa. Ottawa uh, sucks. Terrible. Ottawa Absolutely may be the worst. Terrible. They may be the worst team out there. And, yeah. But uh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a team that's really, really impressing me and starting to play better is Chicago. Chicago was mm-hmm. picked to be Chicago was picked to be twenty eighth in the league. And my lord, they they put it on. Was it Detroit Sunday night yeah. seven two or something? They beat the hell out of them, and I. I was I was watching it when I went live, and I said, "Yeah, they'll probably beat them four to one." Dave Little greetings, Rod and Ken. What's up, my friend? Um, man, I tell you, they uh, that's a team that's playing well, and a team that I think is in danger if they don't tighten the hell up is Washington. Washington, they're leaving a lot of loose nets and loose goals on that defensive end. 
you know, and, and obviously number eight's not helping them back check that much. Anyway, he's always he's always looking. He for never them. has. He never has. You know that. <laughs> yeah, I know that. So, but that's what they get. Yeah, yeah. They gotta fix though. They got to fix because look, anybody out there. Now, I'm not trying to diss Washington. I'm not trying to diss Boston. But when you got a dude that's six foot nine. And he really, he really cannot skate with some of these faster kids. He just cannot do it. I, I, I'm wondering if he's going to make it through the year. And I'm talking about uh, Chara. Uh, his, his age is showing. Yeah. His age is showing. Yeah. Yeah, we're just discussing that whether he's going to make it through the year here at home. Whether he's going to make it through how many ga- how many games of the fifty plus games. And I'm not, I'm not optimistic that he's going to make it through all. No, because. He, he has gotten beat. He has gotten beat like a drum, like in the last week, week and a half. It's not looking yeah. good for him because I mean, skaters are skating by him. Uh, it's yeah. it, it's crazy because um, Chara eight ten years ago was not only probably one of the premier defensemen out there. He was also a guy that would take up for his line. You know, it, not too many people want to get in somebody's six foot nine's face. Uh, he never had to fight very much because I don't think nobody wanted to fight him. But now, but now he, he he's a hindrance. He's more of a hindrance. Boston saw it. Boston got a draft pick for him or a minor league prospect, whatever they got. Washington was like, okay, we'll take a flyer on him. I I got a I, I got a feeling. Uh, by by April first, he's gone. That's that's my fit. That's my fit. Yeah, that could happen. Yeah, it definitely yeah, could happen. I, I, I kind of, I could somewhat agree with you on that. I think I think that might happen. News out news out of uh, New Orleans today. Um, they've been talking the last week, week and a half, that Breeze has actually been doing those chess rolls. You know the ones that we're most of them keep you in shape and they're not, <laughs> they're not uh workout type stuff. This is heavy equipment type stuff to where you go keep playing. And then um, they finally came up today and said something about, he's not going to be our quarterback in 2021. Um, where, where are all these quarterbacks going to go? I mean, my goodness, you need one in New England. They need one down. In, I mean, but there are quarterbacks out there. Um, who is New England going to count on trying to get Garoppolo back? Or uh, what's the word up that way? I mean, you know, everybody I, tells me Garoppolo, but I, I, I'm not optimistic because he's too injury prone. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be him. I don't think it's going to be him. You don't think so? Huh? Any I don't think so, go, but I don't, you know, but any, I don't watch as much as you do. But any chance they gonna go back to camp? Mm. See, that's another thing I'm not sure of, but I doubt it. What do you think? I don't think so because he's not signed through next year, so they already uh, he's already been looking around at other places already. Uh, he'd been he'd been. Talked about in Carol going back to Carolina. Been talked about going back to wa- going to Washington with his old coach. I I think he burns too many bridges because yeah he, he's a look who can't win anybody like he teaches kids in school. You can being a winner is not a problem, but boy when he loses he's one whining bitch man. He is just I mean he is hard to watch. If it's a team that you're rooting for and he's on it, and then you start seeing him on the sideline just go nuts, ballistic on teammates, stuff like that, stuff you just don't see the better quarterbacks do. He does that stuff, and that's just – to me, it's not the makings of a winning quarterback. Your thoughts? Yeah, you're probably correct. Again, you know, you watch a lot more football than I do. I'm the hockey guy, I guess. Um, but yeah, you're probably right. I mean, you have a better, you have a, your fingers on the pulse more than I am, but I don't, 
I, yeah, I think you're probably correct. I don't know. What do the other guys think in the chat? Well, well, well one thing about it, I, it, before the season started, I said this, and I, I made a, a point to say it. Tom Brady going to Tampa, I said, I'm not guaranteeing you that he's going to win it all, which he did. But I will guarantee you he will go and make that team better than they were. They were a six and ten team. And I said, look, they're going to be at least 10 and 6. He's going to turn them around at least four games, and I don't know what they'll do from there, whatever they do. But I think he proved the public enough to the, po to the point that now maybe Belichick loses a little bit of credibility. He may slide down the credibility ladder just a little bit due to the fact your quarterback left. Your quarterback went to a team he knew nothing about, right? And is and then, then I love this one when people come up to me, but but Rob, <laughs> he, he walked into an all star team. He didn't have an all star team every year in, in New England. No. <laughs> Tell me what no, you know. Go back and look at some of those guys. He, he I mean, he played with a Hall of Fame. Uh, he played with a Hall of Fame tight end pretty much his whole career. But other than that, his his receivers have been just like, I mean, just a random bunch of guys until this year. This year, people wanted to play with him. And, they, of course, they wanted to go to Tampa. Tampa's not a bad city to right. go to. Right. No, not at all. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I just – when I hear that one, I, I just uh, – because – at the beginning of the year, I had people telling me Cam Newton, Cam Newton was going to go to New England and win 13 games. And I was like, you see something I don't see then because Tom was up there and the best he could do last year was what, with 11, 12, whatever. I just, so <laughs> Sean Belichick was nothing before Brady is nothing without him. I, I, I'm like, yes, it, you got to have good players around you if you're a good coach i don't care who you are you gotta have some players around you now you might be able to manipulate things and make changes and be a better team than you probably should be but my goodness i mean you know uh <laughs> like like for instance dallas dallas with uh dak prescott they know what they've got he's an injured quarterback and he, he wants forty-five million, and I don't think Dallas is paying him forty-five million, and I don't blame him. I don't blame him, especially with all the quarterbacks that's out there or draft picks where you can pick somebody. I, I don't blame him at all, right there. I really don't. Yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. Uh, now you said stuff, you mentioned that you go, you got one one final article or something you're trying to get to kind of sew up things. Uh, oh. Yeah. What, what you um, so, so yeah, we um I'm thinking about uh thinking about retiring at some point really quick. And this pandemic kind of rushed that rushed that a little bit for me. Um uh, this August I was supposed to be in uh, Norway to cover pro cycling. That didn't happen. Uh I was also supposed to be in Belgium cover world championships of cyclocross in this January. That didn't happen. So I'm getting a little frustrated. Um, I do have, I do have an outlet to work in Europe this summer. Um, but besides that, I also want to spend one more year covering pro hockey, and uh, yeah, then we'll then we'll call it quits and we'll see what else, what other projects we can do. I want to go out my way and not do work that someone else wants me to do. So that's pretty much it. Now, if it stays status quo, are you going to take a chance and go to Europe? Um, well, I think I'm hoping by next, by August, things will be clean and I can actually go. Um, yeah. they were racing season started two weeks ago. So that, well, last week and that's going on. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of still hoping maybe if not in August, the next January. Oh, okay. So, I got you. Yeah. And then and this yeah, is to cover bicycling. Yeah. Pro cycling. Yep. Yep. Uh, now. Would you stay over long enough to cover the Tour de France? 
Um, I actually had an offer to cover that with someone I work for. She's going out. Uh, we haven't really made a lot, a lot of talk. We haven't ha really had negotiations yet, but um, she uh, she's going out and asked me if I'd be interested. I said, well, I don't know. And I've talked to a lot of guys that cover the Tour de France. Well, a bunch of guys that talk to their friends. That is the hottest, that is the hottest working gig ever. Like, that's not fun. It looks fun on TV, but that is work r around the clock. Yeah, and I don't know. If, I don't know if I want to do that. Not that I'm afraid to work, but I, I don't. At this point, I don't know if I want to do that. I got you. I got you. Yeah. yeah. Um, get it right, Rob. It's pro cycling. Okay. <laughs> Sean's getting on me about it. Uh, happy birthday to Sean. Uh, he turned yeah, eight. Sean, happy and and uh, you ride his ass, and he rides your ass all the time. So that's always. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think we should. I think we should all listen to Sean from now on because he's the, he knows everything. <laughs> we actually, we actually go get together with him this weekend for his. For yeah, his birthday. I heard. Yeah, that's yeah. Awesome. So we're gonna do that. Uh, <laughs> it should be interesting. <laughs> it should be interesting anyway. Yeah, uh, met, met demos before. Uh, look forward to meeting Chris Sports uh, Tabletop Top Sports Delaware. Uh, I definitely want to meet him. Real soon, um, you know. I always, you know, wanted to meet Dale. That never happened. Uh, yeah, just, yeah. Uh, but uh, we, you know, posthumously, we got to do some stuff that wanted to do there. Yeah, so, uh, Channel does some good stuff, man. We we can make care of a lot of bullshit, but the one thing about it, I do, I do, um, with pride, tell people that look. The people we got coming in here are second to none because we, we've made up money to do different things, and yeah. uh, it all went to good places, man. So I, I tell you what, I really, really appreciate it. Um, you, uh, you, my friend, um, you have let's see, what is it? A um, art, not an artificial, but uh, what is it? A it's not a lung. It's um, or or. Uh no, I, I received a transplant 10 years ago from an anonymous donor, which is now my best friend. It's no longer anonymous. Yeah, no longer anonymous. You're right. She's from and, um, it was, was it a, a, a kidney? Yeah, a kidney. Yeah. yeah my, my mom actually lost a kidney back in 1985. Mm. But yeah. uh, I, I had an a, a aunt that was only born, only born with one. So, oh wow! Yeah, yeah. yeah I, uh, in, in 2008, they started to fail, and uh, I had to go on dialysis for uh, for two years, and um, that was that was just pure hell. Oh, but, I'm sure. Um, yeah, yeah. Three hours, three hours a day for three days a week, and um, yeah. So she lived in Scottsdale, got a hold of me, and uh, we got a good kidney. So we're almost 11 years in and going strong. Well, that's awesome. And then uh, talk to her every day and talk to her once a week, talk to her once a month. Yeah, yeah almost every day there's some sort of contact. Um, she actually awesome. came out with me to Sweden when I first competed at the uh, um, World Transplant Games in Sweden that I was telling you about. She came out with me, and that was that was a blast. Oh, my that God. Was, that, yeah. I'm sure. I am sure. Now, um, you have a son. I have a son. He's also a journalist. And does does he ride? Uh, no, he ran cross he ran cross country for me when I was coaching for a little bit in high school. But no, he doesn't. He doesn't. Not, he doesn't. No, no cycling. No cycling. No, no cycling. No, no, no. And, um, so what, what's what's uh what's he covered? Does he cover sports as well? No, he's an arts writer. He covers uh, you know that fancy. Fancy art galleries and that kind of stuff. Oh, really? Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and now yeah. is it mostly up in the Northeast, like New York? Uh, yeah. He lives in Mass. He lives in, he lives in Southern Mass, um, but he works for magazines in New York City. He uh, he does travel magazines sometimes. Uh, but yeah, he's um, so in in five years that he's been a, well, yeah, in, in the six years he's been a pro, he's won seven awards. He continually reminds me, in my 30 years, I've won one. So there you go. 
Oh, and, and he's won. He's won four. He's won six or seven. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. So, um, so there you go. Do you have a? Hey, do you have any grandchildren, by him? No, no, no. Okay, actually, thought- we, no, no, no. He's he's twenty eight. Um, I, we started I, shooting. We started shooting. Right, look, right now. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, okay. if he did have grandchildren, it's time for Grandpa to step in and say, look, you see what he's doing? Beat his ass. <laughs> <laughs> that, there I hear you, No, I got you. I got you. If it ever happens. I got you. I got yeah. you. Yeah, we started actually working together three years ago. Um, we started shooting together. And that's basically what I'm doing now. I'm not really writing as much. Um, we just do photography now. The last the last really? couple of years, that yeah, we got to work together back two years ago or three years ago, and then two years ago, and uh, yeah, it's fun fun working with your son. We have a blast. I got I got a first cousin. It's actually he is a excellent photographer. Um, he's done some, he's done some stuff for uh, uh, the uh, National Geographic. He's done he's done some stuff for a lot. Yeah. With a lot, of, and he retired from it, from the railroad. So he he, he but but he's got some great photography, and he likes to paint too. He likes to do that, and uh, nice. which is pretty pretty cool. It really nice. is. Nice. Um, I I'm thinking tomorrow. Now I don't know if I'm going to do it or not. We're going to see my schedule. All it's supposed to be about sixty degrees here, sunny, a little bit of a breeze, but not too bad. I'm thinking about doing a three club challenge and I've got a driver. I got a three wood. And I got a seven iron and I'm thinking about trying to play 18 holes and break 90. I don't know if I can do it, but I'll tell you one thing. If I could do it, that'd be the best I've ever played in my life with three clubs because I didn't bring my whole set of clubs with me. And these were all just purchase clubs. So I've never hit a golf ball. With none of them. Nice, nice, nice. nice. So, uh, do you play golf at all? Not anymore. No, no, I, I love no. to play. Uh, I just, uh, I was bringing everything up here to go fish. And, uh, as soon as I get up here, they say, sir, uh, did you know we, we, uh, we took half the water out of the lake in the summertime and, uh, drained it. And we haven't, we haven't, uh, Stocked that one in 15 months. I said, well, what about the little pond? Well, we haven't stocked that one in nine months. And it shows. It shows. So <laughs> I, I'm glad I didn't even – I haven't even pulled a camera out for that yet. It really would have really – Yeah, been sure, sure. Uh, so I may, if I get a chance to do it tomorrow, uh, uh, I would try, I'll try to have it downloaded by tomorrow night if I do. And I'll tell you one thing. Uh, you know, it could go a lot of ways. I could, I could shoot a, a 110. I, <laughs> who knows? But this is, a, I mean, this is very hilly and a lot of creeks. I think out of 18 holes, 14 have water. So it's, gotcha. it's not easy. It's not easy at all. But uh, we we will see what happens there. Uh, we're going to maybe give it a try myself. So, um Good luck, my friend. As far as uh, getting to go to England, get, or was it? Was, you said one. I mean, you said uh, overseas. Was it England or uh, Norway? Norway. 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 Yeah, uh, our my friend uh, Alan Shaw has. A, you know, he lives in England, but he's got a house in France. Has not got to go there at all since the pandemic, and I'm sure that sucks for him because he likes to go. I think oh, he. Man. Likes, yeah. I think he likes to go to France, and I think he's big into the Tour de France tour, too, as well. Yeah, I know he is. Yeah, I'm putting that on, but Norway, you dumbass. (laughs) So, 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 a buddy of mine, a buddy of mine who uh, I used to train with a couple years ago, he uh, he moved down to uh, Greenville, South Carolina. Okay. And um, we're planning, we're planning to, I'm getting, I'm actually getting my first vaccine on Friday. So in a little bit, I'll be able to travel, hopefully. Um, but um, the U.S. Pro Championships are in Knoxville, 
which is not that far from South Carolina. So uh, I'm planning to make that trip. Not Eastern part of Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, So you'd you'd like to go there, huh? Yeah. Oh, okay. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe I'll swing up, see you guys at some point. I well, guess. that's awesome because uh, well, now when when is the one in Knoxville? When is that? I think it's third week in June. I'm not sure. Okay, oh, it's good. You know, and that's a great place to end up going to the eastern part of Tennessee because I like Pigeon Forge, uh, hmm. Dollywood area, and all down in there. You see a lot of bears and stuff down in there too. It's awesome. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you probably wouldn't have to talk me into that a lot. You could just say, Rob, come to the eastern part of Tennessee, and Knoxville's right there. You just go right by, just a little ways further by. And then, uh, so, uh, yeah, what's up, Harris, Philip, Clint, Sean, Don, everybody, Danny Gray. Yeah, all the guys showing up now. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. If, you, if you're coming down to Tennessee, you have to slide over to Virginia. Uh, try some chicken. Sure. You, you, you're not a uh, vegetarian, are you? Me? Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, you, have to, you have to eat some chili. You have to try my chili. Hell no. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because nobody on my channel has ever told me, yeah, Rob, I made the chili. I like it or don't like it. Nobody tries to make stuff. Because they're always telling me, take in Greenville Drive game, Ken. That's what Clinton Park says. Take in a, a Greenville Drive. I, you no, know, I, we, I, we like going to that part of, of South Carolina. Me and, my, me and my wife do. We like going down in Greenville, all, all back down in that area. We we got our reasons for we, we like that area there. We really do. Cool. Yeah, he I, he just called me last night and he said, uh, "You're going to be ready to travel soon." I said, "Yeah, I think so." So we'll see what happens. That's awesome. That's awesome. And then June, like I say, if you're able to come down that way, all you gotta do. Swing by, I can give you an address, give you phone number, and you just yeah, slide sure. by. And that would be Absolutely. cool. We'll, we'll, we'll go in the office and we'll do a feed. And we'll sit in the other room and eat chili and drink a beer or drink whatever you like to drink. And <laughs> okay, man. Sounds <laughs> so, good, man. All right, sounds good. Thanks so much for coming on, Ken. I, I pulled him out of the bed. Go ahead, he, he said he was asleep. I was uh, no. I said I was in. I was. In, I was in bed. I wasn't asleep. I was watching. Uh, who was I? I was watching Montreal and Ottawa. Oof. Oh, yeah. Well, I was doing. So I wasn't pulling you away from the best game of the night. And not if you're watching Montreal no, and Ottawa. Trust, trust me. That's why. I, that's why I came on. It was not a good game. So, <laughs> all right, boys. You all have a great, great night. Thank you, Ken. Uh, everybody, Thank hit you. that thumbs up if you will. We will have a new. Person on here uh, on Streamyard here next time might be you might be D Scott who knows who we got we got uh, Thanks, guys. We'll, all right there Ken have a good one my friend you guys you are the best thanks a lot all right we'll talk to you soon God bless and thanks a lot bye bye.